Hi, I'm Dan, and we're back for another 80s Christmas episode. But this one doesn't end with a Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Today, we're talking about the darker side of the holidays. The costumed killers, stirring creatures, and worst of all, relatives. Stop it! Stop it! It's Christmas! 1974's Black Christmas is widely credited for starting the holiday horror genre, although one could make the case that A Christmas Carol is the first Christmas horror story, which would make 1901's Scrooge, or Marley's Ghost, the first Christmas horror movie. But it wasn't until the 1980s when Silent Nights truly became deadly. The concept of an evil Santa Claus is always fun, and it goes back as far as 1972's Tales from the Crypt. One of the very first movie serial killers of the 1980s appeared only a few weeks in, on January 30th, in the movie To All a Good Night. This killer hunted down naughty teenagers having a party at school over holiday break. It's admittedly a very similar setup to Black Christmas, but unlike the 1974 classic, the villain here dressed in a Santa Claus outfit and mask, the first time we saw a killer Kris Kringle in the 80s, and it certainly would not be the last. Unlike most slasher films, Christmas Evil follows the slasher himself, Brandon Maggard's Harry, a sympathetic factory worker who is pushed so far past his breaking point that he begins to believe that he is Santa. In his quest to return Christmas spirit to the world, he embarks on a murderous rampage, all while dressed as Jolly St. Nick. The movie, originally titled You Better Watch Out, had mostly positive reviews and has received a number of re-releases with bonus material over recent years. Fun fact, Brandon Maggart, who portrays the murderer, is the father of seven children, including singers Maude Maggart and Fiona Apple. In a reversal of these previous films, the British horror mystery Don't Open Till Christmas features a villain who kills anyone wearing a Santa suit. Edmund Purdom, who is best known for his role in The Egyptian, starred in the film, and he also directed it. If you're enjoying this video, please give us a like and subscribe to this channel to be the first to know when we post new content. One of the most enduring holiday horror films from the 80s is Silent Night, Deadly Night, which features yet another Santa slasher. It was released on the same day as A Nightmare on Elm Street and actually made more money, although it was in twice as many theaters. But the film ignited controversy when parents began protesting the film's advertisements, which depicted Santa Claus as a killer. They claimed the ads caused their kids to become frightened of the friendly figure. In response, TriStar pulled their ads and even the film itself after only six days. The film ended with a cliffhanger and evolved into a franchise. Santa travels all over the world, and unfortunately, killer Santas do too. In 1989, another killer Santa showed up, this time in France. Deadly Games, also known as Game Over, Hide and Freak, and Dial Code Santa Claus, followed a young boy who tries to protect himself and his ailing grandpa from a murderous Saint Nick who tries to break into his house. And the plot is oddly similar to that of Home Alone which was released the following year and became a huge success. A fact that has never sat well with writer-director Rene Manzor. Tales from the Crypt originally began as a comic book series in the 50s, before being adapted into a feature in 1972 and again as a TV series in 1989. As I mentioned earlier, the first Killer Santa appears in that 1972 film, and the segment is reimagined again in Episode 2 of the 1989 series. The episode, called And All Through the House, follows a woman who has to cover up a murder she committed and avoid getting killed herself by a mentally unbalanced Santa Claus, all while trying to make sure her daughter doesn't wake up. Your Christmas plans don't seem so bad now, huh? Even the show's undead host, the Crypt Keeper, gets in the holiday spirit. <laughs> of 
Christmas stories of talking snowmen, toy-making elves, and flying reindeer can really get one's imagination going. But while Christmas has its nice creatures, it has its naughty ones, too. One of the most beloved and successful Christmas horror comedies is 1984's Gremlins. In this Joe Dante-directed film, a small alien species terrorizes a town during what's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. Even though the Christmas holiday mostly remains in the background, the film offers commentary on the dangers of greed, a popular theme in holiday movies. The script was penned by Chris Columbus, who you may know as the director of Rent, the first two Home Alone movies, and the first two Harry Potter films. All of which feature, you guessed it, Christmas. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ron. Also a talented writer, Gremlins would not be Columbus's last film set during the holiday season. He wrote Christmas with the Cranks, as well as The Christmas Chronicles, Part 2. He was even in line to direct Christmas Vacation before leaving due to issues with Chevy Chase. Be sure to check out our episode on Tiny Monsters of the 1980s for more on Gremlins and the films it inspired. Everyone knows about the 1984 sci-fi comedy classic Ghostbusters, but less popular is its 1989 sequel, which received mostly negative reviews upon its release. Ghostbusters 2 brings back director Ivan Reitman, writers Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, and the entire main cast. Despite being released in June, the movie is set at Christmas time, and the finale is set on New Year's Eve. While Christmas is not a major event in the film, the Ghostbusters do wear Santa hats briefly during a montage, and Bill Murray says, Oh baby! Oh you're my number one Christmas boutique gift item! The film was a success financially, but it was deemed a disappointment because it didn't live up to the box office of the original. Many believe the reason why was because another film came out only a week after Ghostbusters 2, Tim Burton's Batman. Since its release, Ghostbusters 2 has gained a following, with many believing that it was underappreciated in its time. But like Die Hard, it is up for fan debate as to whether Ghostbusters 2 is truly a Christmas movie. Let us know what you think in the comments. It's time for one of the wackiest films we've ever included on one of our lists. Elves, a 1989 low-budget horror film with a wildly bizarre plot. I want to know the connection between the elves and the Nazis. Over the years, this strange indie movie has become a cult classic. In the film, an ex-cop turned department store Santa faces off against an evil Christmas elf with sinister plans for world domination. Now you may be wondering, what about the other elves? Well, there aren't any. There's one elf. The movie's called Elves. I, I don't know. Created by legendary horror writer and director George A. Romero, Tales from the Dark Side was a horror anthology TV series in the vein of The Outer Limits and The Twilight Zone. The show ran for four seasons and 94 episodes, and included stories written by Romero, John Harrison, and Stephen King. The 1986 episode, Seasons of Belief, follows a couple who decides to invent a scary Christmas story to mess with their naughty kids. They invent a creature called the Grither, who lives in the North Pole and kills anyone who speaks its name. Of course it's just made up. Or is it? The following year, Darkseid launched a second Christmas episode, this one written by Clive Barker, who is best known for creating the Hellraiser films. This comedic horror episode follows a demon who attempts to corrupt a salesman on Christmas. Look what you've done to my place, huh? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. If you're enjoying this video, the best way to support us is by purchasing some of our exclusive merchandise on our online shop. Our final batch of 80s Christmas horror films focuses on the scariest and realist Christmas tradition of all, spending time with your family. You know the story. A guy brings his girlfriend home to meet his parents on Christmas, and then they are confronted with the spirit of a Japanese samurai. Wait, what? The little-known film Blood Beat was a co-production between France and the US and was shot in just eight weeks. It was re-released after a restoration in 2017, 30 years after its initial release. One of the best parts of any Yuletide is Christmas dinner, unless you're the main course. 
That's the issue Joe Alasky faces in Lucky Stiff, where he learns that his date's family are cannibals, and that they are literally having him for dinner. I'm not a guest, I'm the buffet! The little-known black comedy was directed by Anthony Perkins. Yes, that Anthony Perkins, the star of the Psycho films. In the supernatural thriller Family Reunion, the Andrews family gets trapped in a ghost town on Christmas Eve and must face off against an escaped prisoner and an evil cult. In the vein of Creepshow, Tales from the Crypt, and Twilight Zone the movie, Tales from the Third Dimension was a horror anthology film, but it took its subject matter less seriously. The final segment, entitled Visions of Sugar Plum, follows two kids who spend the holiday with Grandma, but when Grandma runs out of her medication, she gets a little cranky. Time for haircuts. The interest in the Christmas horror genre continued to grow even after the decade's conclusion. The 90s brought us fourth and fifth installments in the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise and the animated classic The Nightmare Before Christmas. In the 2000s, the genre began to take on a more parodical nature with films like the Ginger Dead Man, Santa's Sleigh, and Jack Frost II, Revenge of the Mutant Killer Snowman. The 2010s brought us more holiday horror comedies, such as Krampus, Anna and the Apocalypse, and Better Watch Out, as well as more critically acclaimed films like I Trapped the Devil and The Lodge. And today, the Christmas horror genre is as hot as ever. Have you seen any of these films? Which is your favorite? Did we miss any good ones? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to check out our other Christmas episodes. We have one on Christmas movies of the 1980s and another one on Santa Claus in 80s films. From all of us here at the 80s Emporium, wishing you a happy holiday. Be careful out there, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And I'm really not that hungry. A growing boy has to eat. White or whole wheat.